Thank you. Girl, my good last to hear again, Tara, Tara and Falchrote. Myself and my Fianna Fáil colleagues support and welcome this bill. It makes a number of important required changes to the existing defence laws and will address the ongoing issues in relation to defence forces. The bill also in includes provisions on the role of the reserve defence forces, um, including the removal of that absolute prohibition currently contained in the Defence Act on the members of the reserve, reserve defence forces serving overseas. And we all absolutely support that. It's, it's a welcome um, development. I must take this opportunity again to pay tribute to our defence forces and support them in the work that they do. They ste stepped up again to, to play their part in the COVID-19 challenge and in, in to provide providing the support of the frontline emergency workers. They participated in a number of official groups, such as the High Level, level Task Force on COVID-19 COVID vaccination. In addition to supporting the HSE, the Defence Forces have also provided a broad range of support to other departments and agencies. Sadly, though, as you mentioned, the numbers of our Defence Forces continue to be significantly below the approved 9,500 level, and COVID-19 will most likely add to the challenge of recruitment. But we must act, look at, at why this is the case and act to rectify. The commitments on the Defence and the programme for government must be acted on urgently. I personally am very proud of our Ogle and Heron. I always describe it as ours. I am very proud of our officers and their great service and their great tradition of protection and peacekeeping. And I feel we can all have an emotional attachment and an ownership to Ogle and Heron. And because of that pride and emotional attachment, we owe our serving and our retired office officers the height of dignity and respect. We owe them. And they always show up for us, whether that be COVID-19 or flood relief supports or during the heavy snowstorms. There are so many occasions that they show up for us. And indeed, they show up internationally and have incredible reputation of peacekeeping. We, do, we owe them to act on the commitments in the programme for government. One key commitment of the pr and a priority for Fianna Fáil was to establish a commission on the Defence Forces. This commission was established last December and will continue to work throughout 21 and will report to you in, in December 21. The work of the commission will inform the future development of the Defence Forces. And please, Minister, do not let this report sit on a desk like we see so many reports. Get the report and act to improve the conditions and the pay for so many of our, our officers and their families. And I mention families on purpose as they make a huge sacrifice too. And on that, I want to pay tribute to the McNeila family in Dundalk, who last week saw their son and brother honoured. Private Michael McNeila, who was 21, was a member of the 27th Infantry Battalion, was serving in Lebanon when he was shot as, as he manned a checkpoint in 1989. Last week, one of Dundalk's most scenic, scenic walking routes, the Riverside Walk, was renamed in honour of Private McNeila. And I want to pay tribute to our fallen soldier, son of Kathleen and John, and brother of Julie, and congratulate the Michael McNeila branch of the retired veteran group of ONE, who worked tirelessly on this. And I was glad to support a motion at Dundalk Municipal Council in support of this. This walk will be a symbol and a reminder to all who walked that route of a life who served this country but didn't get a chance to live and grow old in a country that he loved. I also want to raise the women of honour and pay tribute to these brave women. I welcome this evening's announcement and their commitments, Minister, and that how you pledge that those issues will be addressed adequately. Eventually, the department has woke up to this. Decades ago, sexual harassment was highlighted in the Defence Forces by Dr Tom Clonan, and nothing was done. The most worrying thing is not, that it's not historical harassment or bullying, it is present. And Minister, I wrote to the Department months ago on the issue and I didn't receive a response. And I'm sure you agree it is shocking and upsetting to think individuals, victims and re researchers and indeed public representatives were ignored when they asked the Department of Defence about the sexual harassment in the Defence Forces. But why does the state sit still until something blows up? I feel that, is wrong, that the wrongdoing is only acknowledged in the country after victims have to scream and to be heard and shame authorities into act. And I believe your sincerity, Minister. But please do not allow antiquated procedure or structure as an excuse not to make the pri victim the priority here. This country has to wake up to the fact that often this country is no country for women or the vulnerable. So, Minister, I, I applaud your work in this area and I look, look forward to seeing the results of the working for the women of honour. Thank you.